we'll work with one of the most interesting and popular data sets out there the titanic data set as we explore the data set and build our ml models i might use some python libraries in order to help me work with data if those python libraries are not installed on your machine you can get them using a simple pip install you can run pip install from within your jupyter notebook by preceding your pip install command with an exclamation mark as you see here on screen if you haven't worked with jupyter notebooks before you execute code within your notebook by simply hitting the shift and enter keys together shift plus enter will execute this code in this cell let's go ahead and set up the import statements for the libraries that we'll use in this particular demo we'll use the pandas and numpy libraries to work with data we'll use matplotlib and seaborn to visualize relationships if you don't have these python packages installed on your computer you can get all of them using the pip install command the latest version of scikit-learn at the time of this recording is version 0.20.2 and that's what we are using here the version of numpy that we are using is version 1.16.1 and our version of pandas is 0.23.4 we are now ready to get started let's load in the data set that we're going to use this is the titanic data set and the original source for this data set is here at this URL. I'm using pd.read_csv to read in the CSV file and load it into a data frame. In order to sample the records available in this data frame, you can invoke the head function on it. This will show you the first 10 rows and here is what the Titanic data set looks like. This data set contains various details about passengers for about 800 of the passengers on the Titanic. And it contains a column which tells you whether the passenger survived the Titanic disaster or not. Zero means the passenger did not survive. The other columns contain passenger details such as the class in which the passenger was traveling, whether it was first, second or third class, the name of the passenger, the sex and age. The two columns that have slightly confusing names here stand for sibling, spouse and parent, child. The sibling spouse column tells you how many siblings a particular passenger traveled with. The PR column indicates whether a passenger's parent or child was present on the Titanic with them. There are other interesting details here as well. The ticket number for a particular passenger, the fare that passenger paid and the cabin number. And finally, we have the last column here, EMBA. This indicates the port at which the passenger got onto the Titanic. This column value is S if the passenger got on at Southampton, C if the passenger got on at Cherbourg and Q for Queenstown. We'll use the relevant passenger details from this data set in order to predict whether a passenger survived the sinking of the Titanic. Let's take a look at the shape of the data set to see how many records and features we're working with. There are a total of 891 records, 891 passenger details, and there are 12 columns of information. One of these is, of course, our labels column, whether the passenger survived or not. Now, as we explore the data set, it might have struck you that some of these columns contain irrelevant information, information that may have no bearing on whether the passenger survived the sinking of the Titanic. Examples of these are the passenger ID, the name of the passenger, the number on the passenger's ticket, and the cabin number. I'm going to go ahead and drop these columns from our data set. We'll perform the drop in place so that the titanic underscore df data frame itself is updated. Let's now take a look at the columns that we are left with. Well, we do need information on whether the passenger survived or not. That's what we'll use to train our ML model. And other details are relevant as well. The class in which the passenger was traveling, whether it was first, second or third, because you might have heard that first class passengers were given preference on lifeboats. The sex of the passenger, that's relevant as well, women and children first after all. The age of the passenger, maybe younger passengers are more likely to survive. And in this manner, you can make a case for each of these columns being a viable feature to train our data set. When you work with data in the real world, it's quite possible that you have records which have missing fields or missing information. Let's check for these in our Titanic data set. For each column in our data set, we'll check to see whether any of the column values are equal to null. The axis equal to one parameter will perform this check for each column in our data frame. And we'll 
डिस्प्ले अ काउंट ऑफ हाउ मेनी रिकॉर्ड हैव मिसिंग और नल वैल्यूज एज यू कैन सी देर आर अ नंबर ऑफ रिकॉर्ड विद मिसिंग फील्ड हेयर वेन यू वर्किंग विद डेटा इन द रियल वर्ल्ड देर आर स्टेटिस्टिकल टेक्निक्स दैट यू कैन यूज टू ट्राई एंड फिल इन ऑल ऑफ दीज मिसिंग फील्ड एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ दिस माइट बी इम्प्यूटेशन टेक्निक्स दैट यू कैन यूज टू डिड्यूज द वैल्यू इन अ पर्टिकुलर फील्ड बेस्ड ऑन अदर वैल्यूज ऑफ दैट फील्ड सच टेक्निक्स आर बी ऑन द स्कोप ऑफ दिस कोर्स सो वी वॉन्ट गो देर The classification models that we build won't really know how to deal with these missing values. Let's go ahead and clean our data and drop all records with missing field information from our data set. The drop na function on our data frame will drop all records which have even one field value missing. And if you take a look at our resulting data frames shape, you'll see that we now have fewer records to work with. We have 712 records in our data set. But the good news is all of these records are complete with no missing fields. When you run the missing fields check once again, you'll find that all counts are zero. If you want a quick statistical overview of all of the numeric data in your data set, you can call the describe function on your data frame. This gives us statistical measures such as mean, standard deviation, min, max and quartiles for all numeric values. You can see on top here that we have a count of the number of records that are 712 records in our data set there are interesting details to parse here notice the mean of the survived column remember the survived column is composed of just zeros and ones zero if the person did not survive the sinking one if he or she did an average value of around 0.4 indicates that only 40% of the passengers in our data set survived the sinking here is the average age of the passengers it's around 30 so the passengers were fairly young and the average fare paid around 35 you can see from the minimum value in the age column that there were children aboard the titanic as well the min age is 0.42 a child of a few months there are all kinds of interesting tidbits of information to be gleaned from this quick statistical overview of our data